Welcome to Electron Online. Before we show you some examples, some more advanced examples of how to find the equivalent Norton circuit, let's summarize what we understand so far. Let's say we have a linear circuit and we connect a low resistor to the linear circuit and we're trying to find the current through the low resistor. We can do that by finding the Norton equivalent circuit, which contains a single current source and in parallel to the current source, a resistor called the Norton resistor. The exercise then becomes to find that equivalent Norton current and the resistance of that Norton circuit. And then by finding those two, we can find the current through the low resistor using that equation. How do we find the two? How do we find the Norton resistance and the Norton current? To find the Norton resistance, we find out that it's exactly the same as finding the Thevenin resistance. The resistance of the circuit when all the current sources are removed and all the voltage sources are reduced to zero. If we have a representative circuit like right here that has a current source and a voltage source, we simply remove the current source, we, we make that branch open, and we set the voltage of the voltage source to zero, so it becomes like just a short like that. We still contain all the resistors of the circuit, but we have the terminals A and B, we have that open, and then we read the resistance across those two terminals from A to B. So we remove the low resistor, and we measure the resistance across the two terminals. That will then become the Norton resistance, which is also the Thevenin resistance. Then to find the Norton current, we realize that the Norton current equals the current of the short circuit. In other words, we now connect a wire between A and B, and I should have marked this as A and B. In other words, we short circuit the terminals AB, we remove the load resistor, we put a short in there, and then we figure out what the current will be with the original circuit in place and the terminals A and B shorted out. We then figure out what the current would be through that short, and that current, the short current, will then equal the resistance, or called, I should say, the Norton current. Once you have those two, once you have the Norton resistance and we have the Norton current, we can then solve the circuit very readily. That's how it's done. So now that we have that summarized, let's, take a, let's try our hand on some more complicated circuits to see if we can figure out what the Norton current, the Norton resistance is, and the current through the load resistor. Let's give it a try.